Welcome back to the Hybrid Pineapple Podcast. Um, dude, how's your morning? Dude, <laughs> so far super, uh, super chill. It's actually crazy hot outside, though, to be honest. So I've been staying That's... indoors. That is crazy because I was just about to say how nice it is outside. Yeah, there's uh, there's no clouds. It's just pure sun. But also that means pure heat. Which I'm you not have a super trees? I have one tree. Um, it's a pretty yeah. big ass tree though. So our front yard is really like shaded, which is nice. But I was going to say that sounds like it's probably not enough. It does not feel like enough. It really doesn't because it's I like the... The office, this space, is actually in the back of the house, so I'm, like, being beamed by sun, and there's also all the plants in this room, so I have to have the windows open, otherwise they'll die. You're just getting baked. Yeah, that's what uh, <laughs> that's what they tell me, in more ways than one. Just kidding, just kidding. Um, but yeah, what about you? How's your morning been? Um, yeah, man good always try to sleep in you know but yeah then like on days where i work i'm like i cannot get out of bed like <laughs> it's just um anyways then on the weekends it's like i i wake up super early and i'm like i gotta start having fun right now because you know monday's coming Dude, yeah, taking advantage of every single second. I can't believe it's Sunday. Dang it. This happens yeah, every sucked. weekend. Yeah. I, just, I swear, like, yeah, every single weekend, by the time that you finally realize that you have all these things to do, it's Monday again. And you're like, ah, shoot, got to save it for next weekend. But anywho, a couple things. Where do you want to start? We have, like, so many different items. Yeah, dude, so um what is this uh destiny to the witch queen that trailer came out like a couple weeks ago and i i did not watch it at all oh, yeah, what do you what is that um i haven't watched the trailer either to be honest with you but um i do listen to a podcast um mr fruit who talked about the trailer and basically the trailer was very like well done cinematically it seemed very hype but um, apparently, like, the way that Destiny 2 has been going for the last, like, I, I think it's been out for a couple of years now. Um, but apparently, it's current trajectory. People have super low expectations. Like, it's been a really rough couple of years if you play Destiny 2. So, apparently, the Witch, it's, it's like uh, something kind of hype, but most people are setting their expectations pretty low. Man, is it because of microtransactions? No, apparently, it's just the game got... It took like a because it's a looter shooter, so there's gonna be a ton of repetitive parts. But it took those repetitive parts and just made them super mundane. It's like if you had done a raid before, it was just literally like rinse repeat if you wanted to get different loot, and so you just do the same thing over and over and over again. Um, Ugh. Yeah, and they like removed some like level caps, so like every every couple months, I think you have to like get all brand new stuff and like everything that you grinded for before means nothing so people hated that dang yeah i never played any of them um like i knew a friend who had it and i i went to his house like when it first came out watched him play it seemed kind of boring um that was a long time ago and uh back in the day man i used to um go rent games like from an actual physical place yeah when destiny the first destiny came out and uh i rented this like lego game heck yeah totally unrelated <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like i take it home which i only live like five minutes away but it's still kind of a pain to like drive back and forth i put it in my ps3 and like the screen just turns black Oh no. And I'm like, what what is this? So yeah, I eject the disc, take it back, and I'm like, can I get a different game? And the guy was like, No. He's what? like, is it because Yeah, he was like, is it because it's online only? 
and he's like he had no idea what he was talking about but i'm like no it's not an online only game i'm saying i put this in my console is this guy out of his mind it's a lego game (laughs) well i mean i don't know for a fact but i'm assuming like a bunch of people came rented destiny and found out that like you had to have internet for it that must have been his like, prince for Pete response because everyone said that. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean the guy he was kind of a jerk. Oof. I mean he probably didn't like his job. If he if he was acting like that, he probably didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, that that would kind of suck, you know. It's everybody's dream to like work at a uh movie rental store. At least it's my dream. You know, I think that would be cool. Heck yeah. But uh yeah, if they like make you cut your hair and like wear a a polo, then I'm like, no, I don't want to work there. Anywhere that makes you dress like that. Yeah, dude, the the Best Buy people, I feel like have it pretty bad too, because they have like the full outfit with like the vest and everything. And I guess that's actually a lot of places, but I don't know why. Every time I go to Best Buy, I'm just like, dang. I think I'd like to work here, but then I see the people and no one is happy. Yeah, dude, I could see you. I could see you being there. But I think um, they actually let the guys have long hair and stuff. Oh. I, I think at Best Buy. I'm not sure, but. I feel like it's something that's not really regulated by many people. If you, if you work for a company and they tell you to cut your hair, I feel like that's a, that's a bit of a sign that, that maybe they're not that great. Yeah, dude, like that. that's what sucks about Oklahoma is like, they make you cut your hair. Are you serious? Uh, like, if you're a guy, what? Um, they're like, uh, your hair cannot touch your collar. So even if you have slightly shaggy hair, yeah, like, they're not going to hire you. Dude, what? And even if, like, while you're employed, do they remind you? Yeah, like, they're super religious in Oklahoma. And, like, apparently, like, long hair means you're going to hell, I guess. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, that's horrible. Wait, so they yeah. can just push that off on other people? Yeah, like, that's what really sucks. Um, <laughs> I hated that. So then you just have to start shaving your head. Dude, what? Screw that. I would never. I think I would just leave the state. <laughs> There's no chance. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I've I've accepted, like, I, th- I feel like I'm better with shorter hair now. Like... I've looked at old pictures of myself with super long hair, and it's weird. (laughs) Does it feel wrong? Are you ashamed? Yeah, (laughs) yeah, dude. Have you ever had long hair? Oh yeah, yeah. I I I actually like um. Right before I started, I had like crazy long hair. No. (laughs) Yeah. Like ponytail. I mean, mean, for me, it was long hair, dude. No, I I would never put a ponytail. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just kidding. Um. Dude, but, so what? What's the longest it's ever been? Ooh, um, my hair also doesn't like grow down as much as it grows out. Like it kind of just layers and layers and layers until it's like a poop. <laughs> yeah, it uh, grows uh, sideways, right? Yeah, very thick hair. So like, yeah, my hair would just stick out like an inch away from my ears because it would just be layered on top of each other. So yeah. it got like. It got like thick, I guess is what you would say, rather yeah. than long. But yeah, like the longest it's ever been is when I was in second grade, and it was like a little bit past my shoulders. That was a, that was an interesting time. Dang. What about so you? You were the cool kid back then. Dude, ah, uh, I mean, everyone was doing it. Like me, like all my friends or all the people that I wanted to be my friends, they all had long hair. So I was like, oh, that's the cool thing to do. Grow your hair out. Yeah. Dude, second grade reminds me of like one time i found this giant caterpillar like in second grade like we were walking alongside the brick wall to go to the library you know they make everybody walk in lines did they make you do that yeah Yeah. well i saw this caterpillar (laughs) that was like i don't know five inches long it wasn't quite a subway sandwich but it was maybe half that it was long dude okay and it was a thick caterpillar <laughs> dude i like and that you it, have this memory it had a horn oh what dude, i don't know <laughs> what this thing was or what it turned into you know it might have even been a moth caterpillar oh shit true 
That was once but, I was uh, black. Yeah, took it home. What? Lost it. No. <laughs> yeah, I put it in a bottle, a soda bottle, took it home, and then I went to check on it, and it was gone at my house. Oh, bro, no, it escaped. Or yeah. maybe it uh, maybe it turned it into a moth and just flew away. It evolved? Yeah, it evolved, <laughs> broke through the bottle, and then just escaped. Well, my mom, um, she woke up middle of the night to make chocolate milk, as she often does, and uh, <laughs> and she found it crawling along the baseboard. Oh no! Yeah, I bet so she wasn't everything, too happy. it all worked out. I brought it back to school and set it free. Oh wow! Are you serious? Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. The story has a happy ending. Thank goodness. It's crazy. It, the stories never end that way. <laughs> yeah, they, they never end up working out. It's usually like someone accidentally like steps on the caterpillar, and they're like, oh, yeah. no, don't tell Joey. <laughs> He'll be heartbroken. <laughs> and so then they just tell you that it disappeared. Yeah, your caterpillar went to go live on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> he went to the ranch. We sent him <laughs> to the ranch. Shout out Dr. Oh. Phil. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Bro, you haven't whoa, 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 whoa. You haven't seen all the the PewDiePie videos of him sending people to the ranch? It's starting to sound familiar, but no. Um I watched PewDiePie and uh Cinnamon Toast Ken mm -hmm. react to some Dr. Phil, I think. Oh shoot. Okay, that was probably a while I ago. I don't know. No, this was like I think like three or four years ago. It was when that, that girl who was uh the catch me outside. Catch me girl. outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Dr. Phil at uh like his famous line is like, We're gonna send you to the ranch. <laughs> so okay. That's like the meme. Yeah. Yeah. But that's one of my favorite memes. That's a classic one. Um, um shoot. You had just mentioned what was it? The caterpillars. Shoot. It was something about being young. Oh, okay, evolution. Okay, so the caterpillar's evolving, right? Uh, yeah. Someone brought up this topic the other day, and I thought it was super weird. But uh, what if you saw Pokemon evolve in real life? Like, what would the evolution be? Like, would you actually see them, like, you know, like, breaking their spines, like, in creepy movies where they, like, change oh. shape? Or, like, would it just be majestic? Because I was super Dude. curious, and I'm not sure. It sounds disgusting to see. Dude, um, yeah, would they be glowing? Because, like, in the cartoons, right. like, they were always glowing white. Like, like if do you have to wear welding goggles for that? <laughs> so you don't get blinded, and then you can actually see their, like, disturbing transformation. But, yeah, it could also be, like, painful sounding also. I know. I was, I was just, like, I was thrown into a loop of this could ruin my childhood, so maybe I shouldn't think about it. Yeah, man. Um... Like, do you remember, uh, did you ever watch, um, Detective Pikachu? No, actually, I never saw it. Okay, well, I mean, it, it may not have been the Pokemon we, we wanted, but it was good. <laughs> okay, okay. It was good. I mean, it, it was probably better than, you know, I don't think it would have been better if, if they had put like ash in it and stuff yeah dude though the first pokemon movie you know also known as pokemon the first movie oh um, shit yeah okay. i saw that in the theater what yeah dude i don't even i think i've seen it but i think i was too young i don't even remember what, it, what it's about I cried and everything, man, when oh, shit. because, okay, so the plot really quick is Mewtwo mm -hmm. makes his own clones of all the Pokemon oh. that, like, he kidnaps all the kids, they bring Pokemon with them, he clones all their Pokemon, now he makes them all fight each other, so it's like a Blastoise fighting a Blastoise, oh. and Pikachu's fighting Pikachu, and okay. uh, they're just... They're fighting for so long, and okay. it's like a stalemate, and uh, all the Pokemon just keep fighting, but they're they're crying as they fight. Oh God! Yeah, dude, that sounds like torturous. Um, when I went and saw that, okay, they uh they handed out Pokemon cards, 
And I don't know if you've ever seen the ancient Mew Pokemon card. Dude, I don't think so. Let me let me look it up. Yeah. What do we got um, going here? I no longer have it. I don't know what happened to it. Um, it'd be awesome to have it though. Whoa. And it's like, dude, it looks sick. Yeah, it's like Egyptian kind of. Yeah, dude, that looks awesome. Yeah. On eBay for fifty bucks. Wow. Let's go. Unless you get a PSA ten, apparently it's two thousand bucks. Jeez, two thousand dollars. <laughs> okay, so it's a sick card. Got it. Um, dude. So, what? Uh, what's up with you? What? What do you think's? Uh, what's going on? Dude, I saw the. Uh, I saw the Venom movie. I don't know if I actually told you that. I've been putting that off forever. Really? Yeah, I finally saw it. The first one. The first one, yeah. Because I think the second one comes out, uh, like, really soon. What? Yeah. Oh, shoot, what is the day? It's, like, soon, soon. Might be, like, October something. Here, let me check. That sounds right. Um, Release date, October 15th. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's coming out super soon. Um, But in lieu of it coming out, I was like, okay, I need to commit. Watch the first one. Um, um So what did you think of the first one? Dude, it was pretty good. I feel like I really... I really enjoy how they depicted it. It was like such a, I, I guess like an interesting twist on a hero slash villain kind of thing. And like yeah. watching Eddie Brock's like mental struggle was like, I don't know. It, it was a much better depiction than I thought the, uh, the Spider-Man three version of Venom. Um, yo, totally, totally agree with that. I, I actually started watching Spider-Man three last night. <laughs> really? <laughs> that is so random, oh, right? No, just kidding. I actually really like yeah. that movie. I like watching it just for fun. I mean, it it's so good, but like watching it so many years later, it's almost like it's a parody of Spider Man. <laughs> Dude, yes, I could totally see that. What part? It's did you good get to? though. Um, let's see. Uh, he's gonna propose to oh, Mary Jane at the, the restaurant. Whole... Yeah. And uh you know Bruce Campbell? Yep. He's there and they're like going to bring out the ring and everything and oh, yeah. Then she gets mad because he kissed Gwen Stacy the same way and that was their thing. Yeah, I don't think he was uh he was thinking that that went through, I'm not going to lie. No, huge mistake. But it's like it's so um wholesome. You know, because it's like it was just a kiss. It's a kids' movie. It's like so wholesome, and and that's. I was thinking about that last night. Well, wholesome, like how do you mean? Like you know, if they made that nowadays, like, um, <laughs> like Spider Man would have rounded third base and home plate, <laughs> and then and then they would have been like, "So you ready to go again?" Like fifteen minutes later, dude. And, okay, I um, totally get then, you. Mary Jane would have like walked in on him and been like, "What the, f <laughs> you bastard!" Yeah, it would have. I don't know why that that definitely seems to be the uh, the theme these days. It's just like then she's like chasing Spider Man with like garden shears while he's like oh, naked. Oh god! She's like, "I'm gonna chop that off." <laughs> and the scene just quickly transitions, and he's in the hospital. Like, oh my god, she's crazy. Like, I'm sorry, sir. We couldn't save it. Dude, and it, and it um, it's real eerie. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you like the uh, the Eminem song in Venom? I noticed that because I feel like a lot of people talked about it, but uh, I can't remember what scene it comes up in. Um, the credits. Remember? Oh, is it just the credits? Well, I think it's in there, but it's definitely in the credits. Oh, and it's sick AF. I, I'm going to be real. Like, I didn't really notice it. So I feel bad, but maybe I just wasn't very, like, very attentive to the music. Because yeah, once I got to the credits, I was like, oh, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you don't simply turn a superhero movie off when the credits <laughs> begin. Well, there's not a, oh, no. Okay. Yes. Not gonna lie, I've already seen the uh, post credit scene for yes. Venom before I even watched the movie, because uh, they talked about how Carnage was gonna be in the next one. I was like, oh, Carnage is like one of my favorite comic book characters. 
Same I'll here. totally watch that. So yeah, I watched a post credit scene before I watched a movie. I'm not gonna lie. It's probably Did, not the best uh, thing. <laughs> were you shocked when Stan Lee showed up? Dude, yeah, actually. I was freaking I, I was with Lily and I was like, holy shit, Stan Lee appears in this movie. Who knew? So that yeah, was dope. It's freaking I was like, crazy. Hell yeah, let's go. Cause I I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I, I thought that I, I guess that must have been made before um Endgame. Like when was Venom made? Was it before Endgame? Yeah, yeah, it was. His last cameo was in Captain Marvel. Oh, okay. Damn. I think. No, what, I think you're right. I think you're right. Is is he I don't think he's in Endgame. Oh wait, he drives by, right? Yeah, they like yeah. CGI him in. So he could be in all of them. Um what do you think of the idea that um the th- Chris Evans Captain America goes to put back all the stones at the end of Endgame, right? Uh-huh. He has the briefcase and the hammer. Right. He misses his time jump thing and then he's sitting on the bench as an old man, right? Right, right, right. yeah. What do you think of that being Stan Lee? And then, like, all of his other appearances were just Captain America being old? <laughs> Dude, How do you whoa. feel? That's, that's a super cool theory. I don't know, like, I like that theory, but I feel like they, they don't want to take away from the Stanley cameo, you know? Like, I don't yeah. think they ever want to say, oh, that was Captain America. Because they owe so much to Stan Lee for creating all the characters. Yeah, it would like cheapen both of them. Right. I think, I think so too. Yeah. It, it's kind of cool to think about though. It's a cool idea. It would make so much sense, you know? Like it would be like, oh, that lines up. That's dope. Yeah. But I heard another theory recently. Was it for uh oh no, it was all it was about all the um what's the new show that's coming out that's on Disney Plus that's about like the alternate universes? What if? Yeah, yeah, what if. Apparently there's a, a bunch of new episodes of that. Have you seen any of it? I'll do you one better. How if? <laughs> Why if? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I did watch uh, some more of that last night, so now I'm totally caught up. Oh, shoot. Okay. I need your real opinion. Is it something that myself and other Marvel fans need to watch? Like, need? Um, I think... Uh... You, I don't even know if you need to watch any of the live action stuff. Oh, shoot. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, no, Should. okay. <laughs> like, it's good. Um, I don't know if you need to watch it, though, the cartoons. Um, it's cool. Uh, I don't want to ruin it, and I don't know how, how much you want me to ruin, but um, it gets better. It's, it doesn't start off bad, but. Um, how how much do you want me to say? Like, cause it, it, there is a lot of spoilers. Mm. I just like I want to know if it's entertaining enough to set aside the time to watch, or is it something you should just like throw on in the background while you're doing something else? You know, like you're probably gonna pull your phone out oh, okay. <laughs> while you're watching it, just okay. because like you'll have it on. And you, you'll just be playing solitaire or something, you know? <laughs> so you can, like, cook an entire dinner, but also have it on at the same time. Um, yeah, that, that might be too involved. I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, okay. some, of it, some of it's good. Like, definitely the first episode you could cook dinner during. Epic. Okay. I agree with that. But, uh, like, episode three was pretty crazy. Does it uh, does it feel like they're ramping up for like a big season finale, or is every episode like its own story? Um, I think that every episode is a whole universe in, in itself. Like they change one aspect of what if this happened instead of what we got in the live action stuff, and it it becomes its own okay. universe basically. But it doesn't feel like any of them are connected. Um, they might be. Um, I don't think any of the characters are returning or not. Like, mm. you know, I'm sure you've seen the first, 
like clips of the first episode yeah peggy carter becomes captain america right right right. and i was like she she's called captain carter and i was like she should be called captain crumpets <laughs> captain crumpets <laughs> yeah because she's british <laughs> i like that much more but why captain carter you know why did they stay with the theme captain america she's just been captain britain yeah yeah captain yeah captain k Ooh. for kingdom or something i don't know it's got to kind of like, like rem- have some kind of alliteration is that the right word i think you're right but that just means it has to start with the same letter right so she has to be captain oh that's what they did captain carter the two c's yeah um but anyways I was going to ask, uh, what do you think of uh, my prep for Shang-Chi? Do I need to do anything? Should I mentally prepare? What, what's, the, what's, the, what's the go-to? Um, man, great question. <laughs> Let me think. Um, like, the, where it's placed in the timeline is so confusing and bizarre. Um. If you if you've watched them all, mm-hmm. um, I think you've watched them recently enough that he, if I tell you what to watch, though, then you then that's a spoiler. <laughs> so should I just pay attention to? Uh, is there like a cue that's going to give away where it is in the timeline? Like, do they make it hard to tell? Um, it is kind of hard to tell. Like, they don't specific. I don't think they specifically say a date at any time. They just kind of reference events Mm. and um yeah there's okay i'll try to say non-spoiler review i was shocked at like the amount of stuff we got because you know i feel like we'd never get enough and i feel like we did get a pretty good amount of cool stuff in this one you know the stuff people are always begging for um okay sick it did have some slow parts though okay but, I but if you're watching it at home pull your phone out it's no big deal oh, okay darn i'm going to the theater but i mean oh still. you're going to the theater yeah yeah i'm going to the, i'm going to the theater i want to get the theater experience again yeah because after i did rad. that with uh after i did that with black widow i was like oh dang i miss just like you know having no distractions and being like fully engulfed in a movie you totally um so are you a popcorn candy soda guy when you go i i have gone to so many movies and i have never once gotten candy not once but yeah i get popcorn almost every time because i have a problem oh yeah i'm one of those people that like you know i eat so much popcorn that afterwards i'm feeling like so damn sick yeah but, like during the movie it just feels like you have no choice yeah, like I'm the kind of guy who like will eat all the popcorn before it even starts. We're just sitting there waiting for it to start. Dude, yes. And then you usually have to, or if you can, I noticed that it's kind of about to start. They're giving away a couple clues. You're like, okay, now we got to go refill the popcorn and then we're ready for the movie. <laughs> yeah. Like growing up, um, we were never a you know concession stand family yeah um yeah that was like expensive and stuff but like um my wife she's always a uh concession stand she came from a concession stand family (laughs) yeah (laughs) and so yeah i've come to the dark side and i love it dude it's so good that was like the one thing that my parents would sporge on it's like if we went to a movie they would get us something even though it was stupid overpriced yeah but that those that, are like the best memories is when you like go get a bunch of stuff before a movie and then you're just oh just dying basically from cholesterol over intake but it's worth it it's crazy because like they could have just invented any food and we would associate that with going to the movies but we have popcorn like it could have been anything else you know like um it'd be be so weird if it was something else like what if it was like candy corn 
that was like the yeah. thing. And there'd be like just buckets of candy corn. And everyone's just or getting like sick. Cold soup or something, you know? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> like there's another universe where everyone has like cold soup in the movies, and like that's a thing. And there's people standing in line and they're like, you know that cold soup's really overpriced. You can make your own at home for way cheaper. Everyone's like, oh yeah. Man, I just I wish we could go to the dollar store and grab something right now. Did you ever yeah, steal steal food? Or I guess not. I would guess you would call it smuggle. Did you smuggle yeah. food in? Oh, hardcore, yes. Oh, definitely. Same. Me and my brother used to uh just like bring a bunch of McDonald's in our jackets Dude. and just wear winter jackets into the theater. Dude, that is awesome. By the way, <laughs> why haven't some movie theater, whether it's like AMC or a different one, why haven't they collabed with a fast food chain yet? That's that's like a huge profit margin waiting, and I'm I'm not sure why I have to give them the idea, but it would be, it would be incredible. Yeah, um, that would be so sick. That would be awesome. Like, you know, some of them do serve like pizza and stuff, but it's not the same. Like, it's, it's not like not, getting. Yeah. Um, just imagine a you walk into AMC. Okay. Yes. You're going to see a movie, and there's actually not a concession stand. There's just a Taco Bell inside of the theater yeah that's just Dude, that that's would dream be awesome. come true right there amc um, that movie is copyright or that that idea is copyright thank you very much i'll sell it yeah first. like that would be a lot of diarrhea though <laughs> the bathrooms would have a big problem what if okay this, this is messed <laughs> up but have you ever been to the places and there's not many of them but places where they require you to pay to use the bathroom? No. Dude, okay. First of all, it's horrible. But second of all, that would be something you'd probably have to do at that theater. Because then 90% of people are just going to be like, there's no way I'm paying to go to the bathroom. And so they would just yes. have to go home. Totally. I think it's brilliant. Like, it, it, like America needs that so bad. <laughs> um. <laughs> Like, and also, like, self-cleaning bathrooms. Like, no one oh, should have to yeah. go through cleaning that. Like, because, you know, people are doing it on purpose. Oh, I think so, too. Have you ever – oh, I mean, okay, my – I feel bad because my brother's, like, pretty bad about this. But he's the guy that, like, goes into the bathroom, no. washes his hands, and then he just, like, flicks the water off his hands onto the mirror. So the mirror just Why? has water spots everywhere. Dude, I don't know. It's just he was just feeling like an asshole, I guess. Really? Yes, I swear. So, so it's just to make someone else clean it up. I I don't know. I think it's because it's something that you would never do in your own bathroom, so you feel like I don't know a sense of like rebellion. Yeah. It's a horrible thing. Don't ever do that, please. Okay. Yeah. No, I um. I had so many crap jobs growing up. Like, I, uh, I'm like the nicest, you know, to service people. Yeah. Because I had to do it for so long. I think that's a, it's either you had that job or you like know somebody who had that job, but then you're usually really good about it. Like, I mean, my, my parents both had like fast food jobs for a long time. And so, they just like were always very, very nice to anyone that we ever got like food from or like anyone who had to basically like customer service in general. So I I've always done that, but man, some people are just dicks. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say you either die a hero <laughs> or live long <laughs> enough to see yourself become the villain. Yeah. Did you uh nah. do you have any crazy uh fast food asshole customers stories? Um, man, uh, I mean, there's so many. That's the problem. <laughs> Shit, dude, it's that bad, really? Yeah, it's like people don't deserve that. Like, um, it sucks. Yeah, um, man, so many. I, I don't know. Any Karens? Yeah. 
oh, no. definitely like you know no. the, the the ice cream machine is broken i mean that's actually based in reality okay people get pissed but the ice cream machine actually is broken <laughs> you're not lying yeah yeah like i'm not i'm not just saying it because of the meme like yeah people would like drive <laughs> away out of the drive through at like 50 miles an hour because the, the ice cream machine is broken Oh my god, for real? That's hilarious, honestly. Yeah. Um so ice cream was one of the biggest culprits of people's anger. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's funny. Um <laughs> Yeah, man. Hey, do you have any stories of uh like people recognizing you but you don't know them? Oh my god. Dude, it's so funny that you bring that up. Okay. Yeah. The last, like, three places I've been, I don't know what the heck the deal is, as of lately especially, but I'll tell you the most recent story. So I go into this grocery store, right? Just shopping, yeah. doing the normal thing. I'm in the produce aisle. Uh, so I'm just like, I don't even remember where I was. I think I was just looking at some apples, and this old guy just approaches me. And he got, like, really close. So I was just like, you know, I turned to him, and I was like, uh, what's up? And he's like, did you play baseball at uh, <laughs> some, like he named some high school? And I was like, uh, I don't think so. And he's like, no, no, no. It was in, and he like names this little town in Iowa. And he's like, what? you definitely played baseball there. And I was like, sir, I'm going to be real with you. I've never been to Iowa. And he's like, oh, dude, no, your name's Brian, isn't it? And I was like, no, like my name's Dane. And he was like. <laughs> And I, I don't know if he was like juvenile or something, but he kept ignoring everything I said. And then he asked, how's your mom doing? And I just what? said, uh, she's good. And then he's like, okay, tell her I said hi. And then he walked away. Oh my gosh. I, I don't know if that man was just like a little bit out of his mind or if yeah. he was living in some kind of dream and I just happened to be there, but it was one of the weirdest experiences I've ever been a part of. Dude, sounds like all of the above. Yeah, yeah. So, um, for some reason, as of lately, I've been getting, I guess you would quote, recognized, but nobody knows who I actually am. He's like, you're sure you'd never played baseball? I'm like, yeah, you, you, man, I, I'm really sure. You don't remember sure. that, <laughs> that home run. You never had a home run. You're sure. <laughs> Dude, it was just it was just mind boggling the fact that he was so adamant about me being someone else. And so then you're he just not number twenty one. <laughs> yeah. Didn't, you didn't actually play baseball? No, sir. I actually did not play baseball, believe it or not. But yeah, the other the other people tend to pick up mm -hmm. on it much faster. Like this one lady walked up to me and she she asked me if I could grab something. Uh it was like it was like bananas on the super high shelf. Oh she, my gosh. I know, classic. So I grab it for her and I give it to her and she's just like, Thanks, Austin. And I just said, What? And, she, oh. and uh she's like, Austin? And I was like, uh, that's not my name. And she was like, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I was like, Oh no, it's okay. <laughs> wow. So she sounds like she was a little bit more lucid than the last guy. Yeah, I think she's she still had a couple uh a couple pistons firing in that brain of hers, but I think she just made an honest mistake. Which is totally what? fine. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to bash on the first guy either. It was just a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Um. Well, like, why are the bananas so high up? Dude, I okay. That that was just a really weird store layout because normally they just have the pretty much all produce is just in the same height level things, you know. But um, you know where like the misters are for like the produce that needs to be like oh. drenched in water. It was like above. Yeah. That. Dang. But they were also like out of everything. So I think those were like the last bananas left. So that's probably why they were up there. Yeah. Man. Do you have a, yeah, this is a weird question, but do you have a proper time uh, of day that you like to go grocery shopping? Oh, man, I need to get one. <laughs> I've been making like, mistakes. Yeah. If you go like, well, at least in my area, if you go past like 6 p.m., there's just nothing. There's nothing left. And I'm just like, oh. how? How is there nothing left? Yeah. 
Dude. So I need to start going on the weekends in the morning, but it's just, uh, I don't know why. It just sounds like horrible. I used to do that. I was really good about waking up early on the weekends and like going in. No one would be there, but everything was restocked. Nowadays, I just go like right after work. Oh, is there anything you go after work? Or is it just um, it's crazy not busy? too bad. Well, like there's that Safeway right there. Oh yeah. And uh, that one's usually never busy, but there's only like four self checks and one oh. actual cashier. So even though there's not very busy, it still kind of uh, sucks to check out. Dang, I hate that. Uh, um. Do you ever like go in and you're like, I only need a couple things. I don't need a cart or a basket. I'm just going to grab the stuff. Yep. This is what I do. And then I, then I'm like carrying like freaking two armfuls of stuff. I can barely walk anymore. Yep. I don't know why yeah? I convinced myself because, okay, I guess I've only made that mistake a few times because now if I'm going in to grab one thing, I either fully commit to not grabbing a basket, that way I can only grab that one thing, or I grab a basket and I'm like, you'll probably pick up something else. Yeah. There's just uh, this uh, I... this un inherent need to get things you don't actually need because you're in a place where that's the only place you can get them, you know? You're just like, I'm at the grocery store, like, this is the only place I can get X item or this item, so I need to grab it now. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Um, I always like am so glad when I do grab a cart. Oh yeah. It's like, do I take one from outside? And then I'm like too lazy to do that. And then like there's usually someone like cleaning the carts and I don't want to like interrupt them, so I just keep walking. <laughs> and then I end up with no <laughs> cart at all. And you're like, dang it, now I have nothing. <laughs> do you uh do you usually fill up an entire cart? When you grocery shop, like do you go frequently enough to fill up only a little bit of the cart? Like, um, it's like, how do you balance it, your life, you know? Because it's like, if you go once a month, Whoa. that's a big bill. Oh, like, yeah. Huge. That is a giant bill. And you, then it's like, it takes like half a day to unload it from the car, <laughs> yeah. put it away and carry it. Yep. Um, but then it's like if you only buy for like a few days at a time, then you're like going to the grocery store every three days. Yeah, you basically live there. The cashier starts saying, Oh, hey Joey, you're back. You're like, God damn it. Yeah. I don't want yeah, to be that here, sucks. Laura. Yeah. I like that name. Laura. It's a classic. Yeah. Name. I've only known a few, but they've all been pretty nice. Yeah, I've only known one. One Laura I have only ever? good things to say. Yeah, oh, okay. I, okay. that's crazy, right? I, I'm I'm surprised. I thought you would uh you would have met a few more. I feel like it's a fairly common name. Wow, wow, yeah. Um, we grew up in different backgrounds. Dude, yeah, I grew up in California <laughs> till I was nine, but then I moved here. But yeah, did you grow up? You grew up in Oklahoma, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the whole time I was there, I just couldn't wait to leave. Dang. Um, I just felt like there was no point. Nothing mattered, you know. And, like I said, like, I worked a lot of, like, very low level jobs as yeah. far as skill goes, <laughs> to put it that way. And that's very depressing. Dude, yeah, I don't even know if I could survive something like that because, I mean, I worked as a locksmith at Denver Public Schools for like three years, I guess That's three awesome. summers. Um, it, the title sounds a lot cooler than it was. I was literally just walking around schools uh, changing the locker combinations uh, every summer. Oh. Yeah. So like, you know, you Dude. know how like if you uh, if you went to school, you had a locker. If you come back the next year, all of a sudden your combo doesn't work. That's my fault. Wow. So did you like dream about the numbers? Because it seems like you would be <laughs> thinking about numbers all day. I, I thought about like, oh, it, it got weird. I got to the point where 
I was able to like input people's combos so fast. I would like start dreaming about like, you know, turning the dials <laughs> and like how to do it faster. <laughs> it was bad. Dang. But it was like it was a like uh it was a super super mundane job. But I mean like I didn't mind the work cuz I was getting paid, so. Yeah. But I know what you mean. When something requires like close to no skill, just uh just makes you sad. It made me sad at least. <laughs> Um, it's weird going into a school and like all the lights are off, dude. I think is that cool. what it was like. Yeah, I, I would never turn the lights on. I just like to work in the dark. Creepy. Yeah, I don't know. I was a. I mean, I still am. I like love the dark. I, if I could have my house have no windows, I probably would. Yeah, dude. Uh, like I totally keep my bedroom like blacked out. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, the only reason why we have windows uh, open all the time is because we have too many plants. We want to keep them alive. I, I feel bad. I don't want to kill the plants. So I guess the sunlight is allowed to stay. But in uh, in Oklahoma, did your classes in school, were they like really, really small? Like people-wise? Um, yeah, they were like... Um... Well, for one classroom, it'd be somewhere, you know, if we had 25 people, that was a lot, but it was usually under wow. 20 Dude. in one room. I graduated with like 86 people. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Was that weird? Because that means you knew everyone, right? Yeah. And also like you, um, you grow up with them. Like the people I graduated with, I went to school with them from like kindergarten pretty Whoa. much Oof. or first grade or whatever you know what what was yours like well it's so like i i went to elementary school until the third grade uh in california and uh there i went to a school that was like huge like when we would go out for like recess there would be like 500 kids like it was Dang. disturbing it looked like we were at a concert like every day not in a great way either, because, like, you couldn't get on, like, any play sets because, like, there were so many freaking kids. And uh, I, I kept trying to play Foursquare, but the line would be, like, 50 kids long, so I'd just never do it. Um, anyways, and then I went to uh, Seeing Hills in Parker uh, in Colorado, and that school was, like, way, 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 way smaller. Like, my class was, like, I want to say, like, 15 people. So that was, like kind of a culture shock but it was really cool and then yeah uh everyone that i went to that elementary school with uh ended up graduating with me in high school so kind of like Whoa. a similar thing dude so like when you went you moved mm -hmm. did and you got there and then you were in a way smaller school did people like think you were a movie star or anything like did they treat <laughs> you different because um, of where you came from a lot of people like when I told them that I moved from California, they're like, whoa, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. But for me, I was like, uh, yeah, it's just another place. <laughs> like, yeah. And honestly, Colorado was like, I love the fact that there was almost no one here. And like, I guess it looks a lot different now. But back then it was like we were living on like the countryside. And I was just like, oh, this is so nice. So it felt like this place was better. So I was like, you guys have been living the life. I wasn't. I'm not the star you guys are, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, people past third grade, like never, never really cared. Like in third grade, it was a big deal. Cause I was the new kid. But then after that, it was just like, they forgot that I moved and <laughs> everyone was just convinced I'd always been there, you know? Yeah, dude, that is crazy. But yeah, so you finished high school in Oklahoma, and then what was your first, like, like, were you one of those people when you turned 18, you're like, I'm getting out of here? Um, yeah, uh, well, I, um, I was, you know, I wanted to be a rock star. Let's go. A long, like, time ago, like, back then. Mm-hmm. I was in so many bands and it doesn't really mean anything because like when you're in bands with your friends, like 
you create a new band like every three hours you're like dude <laughs> i got this idea yeah and so it's like you end up technically you're in like hundreds of bands because every time you think up a cool name for a band you're like that's our side project where we do this oh dude that's hilarious did but, you do uh, that with uh people from your high school no um yeah i don't know man like i watched too many movies when i was a kid sorry about my cat oh no you're um good. i watched too many movies when i was a kid and then i was like i'm the loner kid i don't have any friends and it's like it's totally my own fault because like i just was like i i basically chose to be that guy you know so i wasn't friends with anyone in school now it's like uh, I, di I didn't start making friends with people or like learn how to make friends with people until I started like working real jobs and like just making friends with strangers. Then I like learned how to be a human basically. Oh, wow. Okay. That um, but like no. Hard. Yeah, it, just, it like, was um, that, that, that drastically. I think it felt great um, to finally be okay with it because like when i was a kid it, i was like always concerned with being cool yeah and i thought like i was too cool for anyone else and yeah then like i, I hung out at the mall all the time and uh that's when i first started actually getting into bands a little more air quote seriously gotcha but yeah um, I don't even know if I answered your question or not. So you didn't end up like leaving your house. Like, oh, you yeah. just like wanted to. Well, like you didn't move away, but basically you spent a lot of time outside of your house compared to before. Yeah, like um, I had a car and I had a friend's house, and I like split the rent with him. Oh, okay. And uh, for a little while, at least. Um, and uh, like he like lived in a trailer and it was like 150 bucks a month nice. to uh, pay for the lot. And like if you own your trailer, then you just pay lot rent yeah. and lot rent is really cheap like that. Let's go. Um, and then there's like electric and water, which is like uh, another two things both under a hundred bucks you know yeah depending on what time of year it is um but yeah i lived in his laundry room well i slept in his laundry room and uh i then like i was working like part-time at a gas station and i was making like seven dollars an hour what? and so and they paid you every monday is when you got paid and so I was taking home like a hundred dollars a week Dude. and um, basically like, I don't know if it's okay to say it or not, but you know, you have to like sneak food. Dude. Yeah. Just to survive. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, there's people who had it way worse than I did. Like I was lucky enough to have a car and shit. But still but, uh... like you were living on the, on the brink. I mean, like, yeah, that's kind of cool, though, but that's crazy. How long were you like, were you there? Um, it was under a year, but it it was it definitely changed a lot for me. Like, I started buying my own groceries. Like, I'm not trying to tell like a sad story or nothing, but <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I, no, you're good. I started um buying my own groceries when cause, just because I was hungry, so. Like, uh, that's what I spent my money on when I had a job as a, you know, a teenager. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, paying $500 a month for an apartment, like, it just seemed so impossible. And right. then you got to pay for gas and you got to pay for car insurance and like car insurance, that's like a hundred bucks a month at least Dude, yeah. and like phone uh. bill and all of that stuff. And that's like the bare necessities. So, like, it just seems so impossible. I don't know how, yeah, it, it, eventually I, start, I moved from working in 
like warehouse, I mean, not warehouses, like gas stations and, and fast food. And then I started working in warehouses where you get paid a little bit more. Like I started getting paid like $11 an hour. Dude. Oh my gosh. That's, I, it kind of makes sense because the cost of living is so low in Oklahoma, but still like that's so minuscule. Yeah, dude. Um, it's insane. And, um, then, like, you know, most places don't want you to be full-time because that comes with insurance. You know, they have to give oh. you insurance. So most of the time, like, you, you go to fill out your taxes at the end of the year, and you're like, it, I know, it, I, I won't get too into that, but, yeah, you have to, uh, they, they made that thing where it's like, now you get fined if you don't have health insurance. What? Yeah, like, Obama did that. Oh, shoot, I didn't even know that. So you did yeah. you probably didn't have the money to waste on health insurance, hey? Um yeah. Yeah. Um well like most of the time when I was employed full time, like you could you could opt out of insurance and then oh, okay. because they, they would like take it out of your check, you know. Right. So, so I would just opt job, out of it. Did you uh how long did you work at the warehouse for? Um, I worked, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's blurry, but yeah, I worked there a couple of years, then worked at another where I worked at like three different warehouses, but the longest one I worked at was like two years and then it drove a forklift and everything. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah. Dang. <laughs> Would you say that it was like harder to get up for work then, uh, compared to now? Dude, it it's insane like like what people go through who have to do that all day like right um i worked at this one place where it's like if you weren't 15 minutes early for your shift you were late and like after four what? strikes you were out and <sighs> like you got eight hours of pto a month what <laughs> oh no and like one of the things they said was like if they are working 12 hour days at the time of you you want to take pto right yeah. and you have eight hours well for that whole week they're working 12 hour days they're like well you need 12 hours if you want a day off you need 12 pto like Dude, what screw that oh my god yeah that's fucked but like they would give out awards to people who um like they would go like have meetings on lunch break and they would pass out these little certificates and there were guys there that had not been had not missed a day in like years dude nah that is not right yeah it makes no sense and and that was hard work like the you know the not every warehouse i worked at was hard work but that particular one was freaking insane man it was like like there would you would lean over to pick something up and like sweat would pour out of you like a oh, like no. a pitcher of water oh jeez it sounds like uh i hate how people like a lot of places do this but they like reward basically being a slave they're like oh you never take time off and you have worked like 30 years straight good job i'm like that's not something that we should be rewarding people for you should be like dude go home like come on yeah it's like the worst culture ever man and it's like what is the point because it's like it's all knickknacks like you're selling knickknacks people are buying knickknacks and no one needs knickknacks and then they're the knickknack factory you know, those people are jumping off the building in China. Dude, yeah. It oh. gets shipped over here, and eventually, how long does it sit on your wall before it goes into the landfill? And then what was the point of all of that? Like, it, people... It's, who... Yeah, it's a very, very uh, strange system, I've noticed. Like, so if you, like, break it down to someone, they realize how, like, screwed up the system has always been, but there's enough drive that it's it's unfortunately probably never going to change like there's people that are in so much denial that they just will not acknowledge how bad it is 
um, for like people working like jobs with no skill, basically uh, unskilled workers, basically, right, right. you know, is the, I think is the term. Yeah. Um, their lives suck <laughs> and right. there's no point to that. There's like no reason why that should be happening like anywhere on the planet. Yeah. I just don't, I don't even know. There's so many people and I think it's like the, uh, the never ending question of like how to address it. But I hate to say it, like, but unskilled jobs are like keeping a lot of people from just being homeless. Yeah. Um, you know, what's crazy is when Endgame and uh, Infinity War came out and like the amount of people that thought Thanos was right. Oh, dude. And people have been saying that for years. It's like, you know, comedians and just people saying like there's just too many people on the planet yeah it's like such a common topic like that's that's good like because people solve problems like the more people the better because the faster you can solve a problem like you know because it's not just like you know you you're throwing eight hours at the problem you're throwing eight hours times right. eight billion people at the problem so you can solve that problem in like you know zero seconds right <laughs> I think people are mostly worried because like I've seen because that makes sense. But I think that the other thing is uh there's so many people that we're almost creating more problems than we're even able to solve. Or we're creating problems so difficult to solve that no matter how many eight hours times however many people, we might not ever solve them. You know, like world hunger? Like what do you <laughs> how? <laughs> there's like no good ideas still. Yeah. Um basically it should I mean I know no one's going to agree with this but <laughs> it shouldn't be anyone's choice like whether someone somebody else eats or not. Like it that shouldn't be up to anyone else whether someone else eats. <laughs> I just completely repeated myself but Dude, no no no. I think it reiterates the the opinion. I like it. It's like, you know, eat when you're hungry and there's definitely enough food like i i know it's like americans throw enough food away oh, alone yeah. that they could feed everybody else but even if we mailed it to them it wouldn't get there somebody right, else would, never, would like get right. it away so the never ending problem one of the many of course but sadly Joey, we can't solve that we can <laughs> yeah, do our dude. we can do our part as i like to as i like to think i think that there's always like something you can do but just don't be one of the people that waste stuff you know buy what you yeah, need and I then went use there. it yeah and then the biggest like argument is you know anyways i'm sorry dude no 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 you're good you can definitely share if we're on the topic you might as well yeah um I think we covered it. I think uh, I think we solved it. <laughs> solved. Consider it solved. Um, myth busted. Yeah, there's actually no people on Earth. Myth busted. This is all a simulation. Surprise. Yeah. Um, so, food debate. One of our other big talk topics. Um, chips wise, Takis versus Dynamite Doritos. Who ends up being the king? Yeah, dude. We need like a theme song for this battle <laughs> almost. Like Shit. battle music. Oh, like uh uh from Smash Bros. Like when they introduce a new character, I feel like that would be good music. Yeah, totally. Or dude. some just extremely heavy metal. That would also work. Oh yeah. Like if I was a boxer or something, I would totally walk out to like freaking death metal just <laughs> slamming and everyone's like scared. And like, what the hell? But you're just hyped the whole time. Your eyes are bloodshot because oh. you just did like 30 <laughs> lines of cocaine. I can see that being yeah. your life. <laughs> just yeah. did a pound of bath salts. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ready to fight until I die. Just kidding. Um, On, yeah. But the chip debate, uh, you tried Takis like literally the last couple days. Um, what'd you think? 
dude yeah we should uh we should both make a case for our thing yeah so i can go um what is it in in court of law there's like the uh <laughs> prosecutor <laughs> yes i'll be the defendant yeah <laughs> okay i'm defending talkies you are prosecuting them typically the prosecutor gets to go first yeah go ahead go ahead okay well now i feel like uh the only case i have against talkies is that dynamite doritos are better objection like had I, never, <laughs> had I never tried dynamite doritos i probably would love talkies Mm -hmm. which I, okay. I don't dislike talkies i do like talkies mm -hmm. but yeah dude it was that uh that markiplier video that hilarious thing that <laughs> watched that he also did one about like cereal or something dude yeah i've actually watched a lot of those they're hilarious he did one yeah. about like the sour patch kids shit it was so funny yeah i gotta stay away from that man uh, the Sour Patch, I I love that too much. I end up like just finishing the bag. Oh, it's like your kryptonite. Yeah, like. Would you, yeah. would you say that's your like number one snack food that you could the, like get addiction to? The watermelon Sour Patch. Yeah. That if I'm going for something like fruity, that is what I'm going for is watermelon Sour Patch. Dang. But I gotta tell my family just to stop giving it to me because, like, that is so bad for me. Yeah, it's I don't know in copious amounts it can be it can get like really bad. Um. So my talkies versus dynamite Doritos. Like I had already tried dynamite Doritos like maybe a few years ago. I don't know when they came out, but um, I guess it was a while back. But uh. See, I can't talk about it without comparing them to Takis. <laughs> okay. I, I like mean... that. Uh... Oh, yeah? No, no, no. No, go for it. Go for it. Um, I like that, that Doritos, Dynamite Doritos, are thinner and have less dust on them. Wow. Okay. Okay. Should I hit you with yeah. the rebuttal? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for it. Okay. Here's my rebuttal, right? Takis, more powder means more flavor per chip. And I think if you're uh, you're analyzing this statistically, the more flavor mm -hmm. per chip means like the more output you're going to get. So every chip I'm getting more enjoyment out of because there's more that that chip has to offer, right? Yeah. Compared to Dynamite Doritos. So that's, that's my number one. Number two is the Takis are like much thicker uh tortilla layer so they're like a lot crunchier and yeah. the bite takes much longer so like you can sit let them sit in your mouth for like two years and they probably still wouldn't disintegrate while with the doritos you know they sit for like 30 seconds they're gone so i like the the durability we'll call it that so on the durability yeah. scale they're also a couple points up um aesthetics the aesthetics of the takis bag i mean it's hard to beat it's purple. The logo's all kinds of whack. There's flames yeah. everywhere. I I love that idea. The dynamite does okay, but they slap the big Doritos logo on it, and it just doesn't look right. You know, it looks like yeah, <laughs> they're trying to be something they're not. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, lastly is Takis have one thing that they do, and it is spicy. Doritos do so many different things. You know, they're great at so many things, but I think they have spread themselves too thin. Takis has focused on one thing and that's why they're superior wow there are a lot of different flavors of Takis though right they're all basically the same flavor but it's just a different <laughs> color <laughs> like blue heat is just the Takis but they're blue dye instead of red dye and then there's oh one that's my. like nitro and it's like hey we took the 100% dust and we reduced it to 75 for the people that complain Really? Maybe I should try nitro. You what might, color is yeah. that bag? Uh, it's green. You actually oh. might like that one. <laughs> yeah, I like the thinner um, chips. That that's me. Like it for for me, Takis. Like it is kind of very forceful. It is. I I I will be real with you. 
the only time I've ever been in pain while eating is while eating tacos. Because the crunch sometimes gets so overwhelming that after you eat like 40, all of a sudden your teeth actually hurt. They're in pain. So that's probably not great. Dang. But it keeps you from eating the whole bag. Yeah. Maybe they maybe they intended for that. What I like about Takis is like you can just hold them in your mouth for like a like infinitely. Basically, right. they never they never dissolve, which is awesome. They can never disappear. They're uh they're infinite like the timeline. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh that's my argument. I think neither one of us are wrong. I think one of us is right, but I'm not going to say who. And that's uh that's my that's my argument. I think if I had tried Takis first, <laughs> I might be saying the same thing you are. Like, right. I may have been disappointed by, I'm because like, I can see it how it's like dynamite Doritos are like flimsy and frail, and they have a very strong Fruit Loop fl- flavor to them. <laughs> True, and that is slightly disturbing if you think about it. Yeah, but nothing against I, them. I, I I agree with you. I think there's a bias that comes with trying something first. We both hold that bias, but that's okay. We're recognizing it now. Um, dude, I uh was at the store yesterday and I picked something up. <gasps> what? Yeah. Um, well, right now there is a new 2021 Oh god. M- mystery flavor Mountain <gasps> Dew. What? Really? Yeah got a 24 pack i'm gonna bring some to work it's a mystery flavor hold yeah. on yeah i gotta see I gotta yeah see what you're talking about i'm looking it up um so the box uh looks like uh kind of like a misfits album cover or you know uh afi's first early stuff album Whoa. covers it's like halloween yeah crust punk dude that's sick okay it's voodoo Oh yeah, voodoo. Thank you. Yeah, that's what it's called. Dude, that is actually really cool looking. I love the the cover art. The cover art is sweet. Yeah, so I'm I can't wait to try it. Well, how I haven't yeah. tried it yet. You haven't even tried it? Are you waiting? I haven't tried it. Yeah, I don't even know what color it is on the inside. Like I I'm imagining the fluid's gonna be blue on the inside just because of the box is blue, but I thought they made every mystery flavor uh the white. Wasn't that like the Ugh. thing? Oh no! Ew! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it might be because I'm seeing some uh, some bottles Ew. right now that are. I don't want to know. Oh. I don't want to know. <gasps> I hope it's not white. I'm gonna be so sad now, dude. Dude, if it's white, I was just kidding, bro. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not. I'm gonna say less. That way, I don't spoil it for you. But yeah, uh, I'm I'm super stoked to try it. Uh, what are your expectations? Yeah. You think it's gonna be good, bad? Man, I just based on the box, I think it's gonna be like a blueberry flavor. Oh, I'm like an OG Mountain Dew fan. Like the original is the best to me. Like I just love original Mountain Dew. So like I love that Mountain Dew like has so many freaking flavors. It's like the coolest thing ever. I hardly ever buy them though. Right just seeing them i'm an aesthetics guy so just knowing that they have like every color makes it satisfying but yeah i'm only gonna get one and it's baja blast every time yeah i mean if i have the option of course that's technically the normie answer right i'm down to be normie that shit's (laughs) fucking lit (laughs) that's the best no doubt but that's that's i'm just uh always disappointed that it's not regular mountain dew like oh cool a new logo and i try it and then it's like slightly different (laughs) oh i see so you're just disappointed that it's not more unique yeah dude um there's a saying um and it applies to like everything um it's expectation is premeditated disappointment oh dude i live by that i completely agree with that you heard that one? I haven't I haven't heard it like said in uh, such a formal manner, but the idea is something I live by. You know, yeah. like don't have expectation otherwise you'll be disappointed. 
Dude, which I feel like this is a good time to bring up the Matrix 4. Oh, what are your expectations? <laughs> Have you set them I'm high? already, no, I'm already <laughs> disappointed. What? Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm freaking, uh, what Dude, was I, I thinking? Uh, you, did you set expectations? Yeah. Oh, no, Joey. Well, you, you set yourself up for failure there. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I'll tell you my initial reaction. I think you should tell it me yours. Yeah, you you go first. Okay, so my thoughts were, um, it's another Keanu Reeves movie, so it's gonna be like I'll enjoy it because I'll see him. That's all I need. Um, <laughs> it, you just need a poster of him. That, that it doesn't would, even move. I don't even have to see the movie. If I just got a poster, I'd be like, oh, that was a good movie. Um, but so he's gonna be in it. That's exciting. Oh jeez, right, that was my dog. <laughs> um, so he's gonna be in it. That's good enough for me. But the plot line looks very frustrating. Um, based on like the movies that I like and the movies that I hate, it is unfortunately like kind of climbing up the tree of a movie that I'm not gonna enjoy. Now, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put my head in a negative space already. So mm -hmm. I've decided to just throw all of my initial opinions out the window, and I'll mm -hmm. just have to see it. But yeah, well, uh, what what were your initial reactions? Well, what is it about the story that you're you're disappointed in or something you were just saying? Just like the, the idea that basically we're just going to see uh, Neo go through uh, a phase of like trying to remember what real – like what really happened and what the whole story is. So we're just going to be frustrated for most of the movie that Neo doesn't understand like what has really happened. And then it'll finally happen at the end, and he'll realize everything, and then it'll be like, oh my gosh, I remember I have powers. Whoa. Yeah. And it's like, can we just start the movie right then? Right. I, I'd like Instead? I don't give a fuck about that. Like, they, they're they more than welcome to give me a, a 30 second intro of like, there was one point where Neo forgot everything, but now he remembers, and movie start. <laughs> yeah. It's like. They want him to have like growth as a character and stuff, but it's like amnesia, really. That's yeah, like, like a bro, daytime soap stop. opera thing. Oh, it's just it's overused and annoying, especially for a fourth movie. A fourth. Yeah. Like, why did I watch the first three movies if my character was gonna forget them all? Yeah, like um, I'm definitely gonna marathon the uh, the first three, even though. You know the second two aren't as good. I don't hate them or anything, but yeah, they're 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 not as great. I'm also not a movie. hater. I think they're right. Like the first one, I think is just so amazing. Is what it is. Is like it's kind of like you know the first Star Wars, you know, or whatever. I I won't go there. I won't go there. <laughs> uh oh, you're you're climbing up a tree. I don't know if you're prepared for. Um. Yeah, dude. So one of my first things about matrix 4 trailer that i was already disappointed by was like the color saturation in the trailer it's like really doctored up you know it's like we don't see these this amount of color in real life you know typically <laughs> it doesn't look like that yeah and if you go back to like the first movie um they used a filter for like the whole thing. And um, I just really liked that way that the first one looked. And yeah. now it's like, I just feel like I don't like that. I, I wanted it to be more like the original. I think so too. I think that's where a lot of people are going to be disappointed, but that's also why I'm, I'm throwing all the expectations away. Cause like maybe they're trying to go for something very, um, like artistic if you will which yeah i'll try to be open to it but also another big question i have for you okay. who is the guy uh that's supposed to be um what's his name the black guy with the glasses who has morpheus yeah who is is he supposed to be morpheus or is he like some someone else well i feel like did lawrence fishburne who played Morpheus? Yeah, did he decline, or did he, or did they not want him back? You know, it seems like they would want him back, so maybe he declined it. He was in the John Wick movies, right? So like he's like 
he's still he's working. still acting. Yeah. But I have a bad feeling that he declined because he didn't like the movie. Yeah. Which and oh, that makes me scared. Yeah, I mean, that's just so crazy. Um, I think it's kind of weird that like why did they get a guy that looks exactly I mean not exactly like him, but like they want they tried to make him. Yeah, they're look trying to a make him like as him. similar as possible. Which like, I'm not gonna lie, I hate that. It it just doesn't make sense, like logically, in a storing storytelling perspective. Like, why would it, why would it be that way? Oh, I uh, yeah, that's that's my biggest gripe about the trailer, is that now I know that Morpheus is like some recasted guy, and I ha- I always have a problem with that. Like, yeah, who knows, man? Um, in the uh, first trilogy there was a different oracle in the first film and then in this, the next two or something there's a you know the actress in real life died and they had a new actress play her and i felt like she was a small enough role where they didn't necessarily need to mention it but they did in the actual movie say that she found a new shell hmm so like they recasted her, but then they felt the need to explain why she had a different body. Like why 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 explain it, you know? So yeah, it's like I don't think I feel like she was a small enough character it it would have been fine to just be like, We're going to see the Oracle and this is her. Like, you know. Right. <laughs> It wouldn't be the first time people were recasted because of, like, the real actor dying or something in real life. Yeah, like, it's happened many times before, and I feel like normally they just don't acknowledge it until, like, the post-credits, and even then they just say, like, rest in peace. Yeah, like, if the character Morpheus is reincarnated in, like, a younger body for or something, like like why not everyone i don't know man like why why is neo still aging in the matrix and stuff but right you know because if see once you try to explain it and it it all falls apart (laughs) maybe that's where we're we're taking it too far i guess like maybe they'll have like a good explanation but like i said set your expectations low just in case like the um the first one was awesome because like the opening scene you have um trinity right she's running mm-hmm. on top of the rooftops and she like dives off of a building across to another building through a tiny window and then like flips around and is like pointing her guns ready to shoot the guy who comes through that tiny window as if he could do that jump too right yep and it's like just believable enough but also so unbelievable (laughs) to where you're like right on the edge yeah and that's what makes it so thrilling where it's like so unbelievable but but possible i guess kind of yeah no i i know it it, uh i feel like it it captures that feeling which i think is very hard to capture but yeah that's why i think it's been so hard to replicate like even in the second and third movies I think they they lost it a little bit. They went way over the top yeah. with the uh, the magical stuff. <laughs> That's where everyone was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Like, it's really. I thought it was awesome the opening to you know the Matrix Reloaded. You're like, "Oh, Neo's back, and he is badass AF." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was super <laughs> down for it. I was like, "Okay, sick!" Like, we're gonna paint our character as like OP now. Which I'm he I, flies. I, we, all we wanted was that. Yeah, so then it's like he's basically become Superman and everybody, you know, has their criticisms of the character Superman. He's too perfect. So how do you tell a story like that? Well, in the Matrix, they were like, You gotta be in two places at the same time. Um, if you wanna save Trinity's life and, you know, the world, you know, you Well two and one action. Yeah, so like he's he's faster than a speeding bullet, but is that fast enough, you know? Um and, and did they ever do that with Superman? Not I don't think so. Like I 
that's one way because when you have like an all-powerful character you got to depower them in some way uh in order to tell a good story right you need to you need to give them some kind of like crook or give the bad guy some kind of like advantage otherwise it's just not entertaining so so in matrix 4 it seems like neo's kryptonite is this amnesia thing i know but like it seems like it's almost too uh too demeaning of his character like he's gonna like just be ass for like a long time is what it looks like which is gonna be so annoying yeah man like out of all the directions they could have gone with it um i feel like they kind of played it safe you know like um neil patrick harris he's in in the trailer Mm -hmm. Um, I was surprised to see him, and then it's like, what's with those blue frame glasses? I know I'm like nitpicking <laughs> on stuff, and like, the si- it's all a symbol and everything. Yeah, but that was like really on the nose. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is. I feel like I need to, uh, I need to do a deep dive into the trailer, and like really analyze everything. If I'm like that curious, I don't know. I just didn't wanna, I didn't wanna get too deep into it because then you know you inherently start doing uh expectations like you start setting them and then you want things to go a certain way yeah yeah it's it's my fault um (laughs) i uh i shouldn't have watched it at all but like i i think uh the them showing the machine world that is what i want more of like that is what's awesome it's like the the lore of how we got the matrix like going through and exploring you know in the first one he's like you believe the year is 1999 but what if i told you it's more like 29.99 now that's freaking epic yeah that that holy shit that draws in an audience i mean at least for me so i i completely agree i feel like if they went into the uh the depths of the i guess what would you call that the real world it'd be so much cooler yeah like um it's kind of the classic uh, hero's journey thing where it's like he's going to realize he's the chosen one and save the world and stuff. But it's like there's all those other humans in those pods. Yep. And, I mean, are they better off in the Matrix? Will they even ask that question? Yeah. Is it better that they don't have to ask that question? And they survive outside of that goo. Yeah, (laughs) the goo. Yeah, I always thought it was interesting. I always thought, like, what if we were in the Matrix? Like, would you even want to get out? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, dude, in the first movie, there's, um, I think his name's, like, Siler or something. Or is that Heroes? No, no, I think you're right. I think you're right. Cypher, maybe. um, Oh, it might be that. It sounds similar to one of those two. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, he always says, why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? Right. And he's like yeah. eating a steak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, that is so uh, relevant to like our reality right now. It's like people are happy with their routine and their redundant life in a way that it's like, if there was a way out of their suffering, would they even choose it because they like what they have right now? Right. And like, shouldn't it be up to choice rather than like someone who thinks that. Right. You know, right. They'd be better off. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you're totally right, man. Like. You jacked me out of the Matrix, dude. Put me back in. (laughs) Yeah, I'd be like, bro, this is an ass place. Like we have no good food. We're all like on the verge (laughs) of dying. Why would I want to be here? Yeah. Tasty wheat. Like, oh, but dude, guess what? Like you have like a control over your own thoughts and body. And I'd like, I was happy just living before. Thanks. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an awesome movie. It's a really cool concept. Good movie. I hope that they don't fuck everything up in matrix four, but honestly with, uh, with my expectations being at zero, they can't fuck it up. So we're good. Like, I guess they already just, they nailed it with the first one. Everything that came after it's a failure. So, I mean, if you look at it that way, <laughs> it's all a success. It's only up from here. They're at rock bottom. They could stay there. Uh, That's cool. 
Yeah. Yeah, dude. Um, oh. I was going to actually ask the, another game topic, but I was very curious about this question. What is the, uh, what is the first game that you were addicted to? Oh, man. Great question, right? Okay. It comes with a story. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. So, um, my sister. Yes. <laughs> okay don't worry there's more to this sentence oh that's it okay <laughs> that's a cool one okay i'll tell you about mine <laughs> i was just thinking how messed up that would be if it, the sentence just ended oh, right God. there <laughs> no my oh, sister God. um she uh she worked at the mall she started dating this guy from the pizza place and um you know the like when you want to get in good with a girl, you have to impress her little brother. Yep. Always makes sense. So um, he, he let me borrow his Xbox. It was an original Xbox. Whoa. Th this dude had like a hundred games oh in a gosh. freaking milk crate. <laughs> what? That's awesome. Yeah. I like it. And uh, yeah, it was awesome, man. Like that was that, was, that guy was cool. Um, and, uh, they brought over, like, Guitar Hero, I think, one time, and, and th they had the giant The Duke, you know, controllers. Oh, I think yeah, I've seen one Yeah, that's how long ago it was, man. Jeez, yeah. So, um, he lets me borrow all his games, and, uh, dude, one of the games was, uh, Prince of Persia 2. Oh, shit, okay. Yeah, so you might have to look this up. Now yeah, you don't have to do you. it right now. Well, you don't have to do it right now, but the opening cutscene for Prince of Persia 2 on the Xbox, it's just a close-up of a girl's giant, fat, naked butt. <laughs> That's the opening and scene? She, yeah, she's like walking up the stairs really slowly. Oh my Oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you're like, so as okay, you... this is the best game ever. <laughs> yeah, you know what I did, though? <laughs> Pause the game. I kept quitting the game and restarting oh, no. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dude, yeah. 1993 so... is when this game came out. Uh, that doesn't sound right. Um, it, You know, they remade... Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Like, this this game was probably in the early 2000s. Was, was it not called Prince of Persia 2, The Shadow and the Flame? Is it? It's for the Xbox. Like, maybe I'm. It says it was so released on Xbox. In 1993? It says uh, the initial release was 1993. Maybe it came out later for the. Uh... It was kind of like, you know, the old arcade game Pitfall. Like, Prince of Persia used to be like that. There's one that came out in 2004. It doesn't look like this is Prince of Persia 2. This is a uh, Warrior Within. Do you that know might the, like, be it. Do you know what the little subtitle was? Was it Sands of Time? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check YouTube Okay. really quick. Um, That way... Our fans can look this up. They want to see some of this nasty. <laughs> um. Yeah, because the first, uh, this uh, one that came out in 1993 definitely looks very um, arcade gamey. It's a side scroller. Um, let me see if this is it. Uh... It's okay. In the meantime, I'll tell you a little bit about my favorite game, or the one yeah, that I dude, got addicted sorry. to, like initially. No, you're good. You're good. Um, Midnight Club, Los Angeles. You ever heard of it? Um, yeah, I've seen the case. I remember seeing the case, and uh, the I've case never played awesome. it though. You never it, played it? It's okay. A card game? Yes, it's a card game. Uh, my brother like loved 
loved card games. That's like the only games he'd ever play. So we both like spent uh, some money to buy this game in that club Los Angeles. We played it on the PS2. And yeah, we just, it'd be me and him going back and forth for like, geez, like weeks and weeks and weeks. Like every other day we'd play. And that was the first game that I was just like obsessed. I would be like getting up at like 2 a.m. to play a little bit just because I woke up and I was like, oh. No Dude. one's up but me. I can play. That is the best. Like staying up all night playing a video game with your brother. Oh, it, they were they were really good times. But yeah, that was my that's my first game on PS2 that I got like addicted to. Every game before that, like I really loved, but that was the first game I thought like I can't live without this. <laughs> um. So do you ever get out of the car in that game? Nope, never. You don't even have okay. a person. Like, you don't even see their <laughs> shadow. Like, they don't even... It's basically just cars. <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. Yeah, that reminds me of, like, uh, that game Driver. Driver? Yeah, it's just called Driver. And it was, like, came out on PS1 a long time ago. Oh, PS1? That's so classic. And you could not get out of the car, but it was it was fun, man, to just drive around forever. And I got that for Christmas one year. Um, my dad, he said he almost bought me GTA, like, oh. 3 or something. <laughs> and then it was, like, on the news where you're, like, chainsawing people on the sidewalk. And he was, like, so he got me Driver. And I was, like, I didn't want GTA. I wanted Driver. Because I wrote down Driver. And he almost got me GTA just, like, because he thought it'd be better. Like, he's a nice guy. He's, he's great. Oh, nice. Heck, yeah. But he got you um, what you wanted in the end. Yeah. And and it was better, I think, because like I don't back then I wasn't really into chainsawing people on the sidewalk. Oh come on, just kidding. That makes sense. Uh, dude, I have the link, so um, I don't know how to send it though. Oh heck yeah, uh, you can toss it in chat. I'll open her okay. up. Um. Should I be clicking something right now? Let's see. If you go, oh, I guess you don't have access. You can just tell me what it is then here. I'll look it up. Okay. Um, hey, I can hit control V right here and. Oh, maybe. Yeah, okay. To, oh, oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. So you're looking, you want two minutes and 40 seconds in. I'm okay. <sighs> Whoa, dude, this is a very intense beginning. My goodness. It's pretty sick, though. Okay, this is the one. Oh, Warrior. Okay. You said 2 minutes and 30 seconds? 40, yeah. Seconds. Okay, gotcha. Dude, this graphics is what I'm talking about. Oh, my God. You see it? <laughs> so she's evil. Yeah, she's the bad guy. She's the bad guy. Okay, okay. Throughout like the whole game. I never played it. You know what? I never played it. I just kept watching this cutscene, and then I once I um, you know, had my hair, uh, my head clear, you know. <laughs> and you're just like, I would play a play different game. game. Yeah. Oh my gosh, dude, that's hilarious. <laughs> so you never played? When you have to like turn the xbox off and turn it back on and put the game back in and restart it like it takes a Jesus. few minutes to set it back up and then watch that like you know it's like five seconds of her butt like completely naked literally but. five seconds wow the determination the vigor gotta respect it <laughs> yeah dude so that was um, not the first game you were addicted to <laughs> uh the the first game I feel like I was actually addicted to was um, at that same time he let us borrow Morrowind on uh, the Xbox, and that's like the Elder Scrolls Three, oh. and like I felt terrible, man. I was like in my room for like seventy-two hours. Oh. I mean, I slept, I slept and stuff, but and I ate. Dude, it was oh during gosh, summer. That sounds awesome, though. That sounds freaking like the dream. Wait, so what? What was the what was the game like? Describe it. 
okay, so uh, Elder Scrolls Three, you know, it's kind of like uh, Skyrim in a way, okay. and uh, the huge thing open world? that, yeah, okay. huge open world, but just with way worse graphics. The thing that sucked about that game was uh, your stamina drained as you walked. Oh. So like, as you if you built your character like as a mage or something, and you had like no stamina, then you would just be walking. Your character would just fall down because you had no stamina left. And then you had to wait for oh, like, no. you know, hours until it restored completely. Um, also, your chance to hit uh, your enemy was based on your skill. And so it was a dice roll, a random number generator. What? And so like, if you did not build a character to... Even if you did build a character to kill, you know, to fight with swords, you know, um, most of the time you are missing. So that game sucks to play. It sounds horrible. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> but that, uh, sounds, but that sounds like a, I bet at the time it was very uh, life changing. Like, had you ever played a game like that before? No, um, I wouldn't say it was. It, it's not even in my top 10. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But it was just um, the first game you remember being addicted to. Yeah. And I felt so guilty, too. Because um, you just, like, what, never never appeared in your family's lives for, like, two months? <laughs> well, it was more like three days, um, and, I, and then I gave it up. Oh, wow. You gave it up? Yeah. Yeah. You're just like, wow, this addiction cannot continue. Um, what was the first game you like stayed up all night playing? Oh, or just or just any one of your favorite memories of like playing all night in a game, like till the literally sunrise the next day. Oh God, my favorite is Destiny. I remember like just me and a bunch of friends were doing like this new raid that had just come out, and it was like super difficult. And we were going to do it on all three of our characters. So basically it was like spend at least four hours on each character. So yeah, we stayed up from like 7 p.m. to like 7 a.m. Dang. I mean, it was great. Like I was freaking so hyped, but oh my gosh, I felt so bad. Oh, like, why did I do that? Oh my gosh. But it was it was worth it. It was totally so fun. Dude, that is awesome, though. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. What about you? Um, so like a couple games come up for me and definitely the first one is going to be Counter-Strike. Oh, let's go. Like, uh, when my brother got married, um, for his bachelor party, uh, we, we had a LAN party and, oh, let's um, let's go. Yeah. So he was, uh, he was 20 years old and I was 11. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. And like, you know, so you get like two folding tables, you put them opposing each other, and then in the middle there's like an ocean of cords oh, connecting gosh. everything. That's what it was like back then. Everybody had those giant white monitors, like the the project rear projection monitors and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and we stayed up like till the sun came up the next day uh playing counter strike um i mean i was the little kid who yeah. like n i wanted it to be my turn you know but there wasn't a spare <laughs> and uh so when people would take breaks i would get to play but most of the time like they were cool the cool kids and stuff and yeah um you know freaking a tower of of pizza boxes <laughs> a pyramid yeah dude That's a pyramid awesome. That's of mountain dew cans that's the freaking dream right there. And then we had to be up at like, you know, the wedding was at 10 the next day. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and we all felt like shit. Dude, how did how did your brother survive? I don't know, you know, but, you know, like, I assume like right after the wedding, like, it's not like you can just crash. You probably like had to go drive yeah. to go to go on his honeymoon and stuff. And it's like, dang. He was probably going up on no for sleep. like just way, way too many hours. Yeah. But if he liked it, man, that means that's probably like one of his best memories ever, which is awesome. 
um the first uh battlefront you know like uh yeah. the old one mm-hmm. uh, we stayed up all night playing that that was awesome that's a great game both the battlefronts are insanely good so fun i, th- I think i yeah. stayed up like all night with my friend connor at his house because i didn't have an xbox at the time so i used to play at his house but we were playing battlefront too and yeah i don't think we yeah slept. Same here, dude. Like, I was at a friend's house. I didn't have an Xbox at the time. That was awesome, yeah. though. I remember his parents were like, uh, you guys look pretty tired. And we're like, nope, we're fine. Yeah. And they knew that we had not slept. It was so obvious. Yeah, dude. That is awesome. Like, those are the good old days. Seriously. I just, I always felt so bad because his parents would, like, sometimes his dad would come down at, like, 4 a.m. And he'd be like, <gasps> all right, guys gotta turn it off and we're like fuck he caught us <laughs> like if you're being loud yeah or... yeah oh man and i was like damn we gotta shut the fuck down but it was so fun yeah. like oh it was so fun um yeah man where was i going i don't know that's okay i will uh i'll give you another topic because i think uh I think we'll probably wrap up soon anyways. Let's see. What should we end it on? Um, ping pong. I think we, we haven't even we haven't even discussed it, and it's like probably the highlight of my life as of lately. Yeah, dude. Who's your money on? Who's my money on? For, for the company ping pong tournament. The whole company or just Colorado? Because like, I don't even know the people in Oklahoma. Um, yeah, just like our office. Okay, our office. Okay. Uh, I guess I should give some context to anyone that's listening. Basically, we have a ping pong tournament in the office. Uh, we're deep right now. There's only like, let's see. Would you say we're balls deep? We're we're freaking not quite balls deep. We're close though. <laughs> I mean, ping ping pong balls. Yeah, obviously, get your mind out of the gutter, people. Um, I think it's just Kate versus Mark, and then whoever wins that versus me. So, like, uh, I don't want to sound like an asshole, but I think I can win yeah i think um i don't know i don't know if you'll beat mark i mean i have good a lot of confidence in you um yeah Mark's but good. yeah man he's he's no uh he's no opponent to look over i think if i play the right way though i think i could beat him i think it's gonna be really close yeah it's gonna be tough that much is i for think sure. it'll be tough it's gonna be a three game Oof. day oh god I don't think it'll be a two gamer. I don't know. Dude, but more importantly, because even if I lose this one, I don't mind. But I think that we have to set up a 2v2 tournament. A duo yeah. tournament would be so cool. Yeah. And there should totally. be double elimination because there's not going to be that many teams. Yeah. Oh, so, that's going to be insane, man. Who do you think the ultimate duo would be? Um. I don't know, man. Um, Any team that doesn't have me on it is going to be good. (laughs) Come on, bro. You're good. We just got to get your serves up. I'm dramatic, and that is sometimes confused with good. No, I think it it can be uh, argued as good. I'm like Rudy. (laughs) Rudy from what? You ever seen? Okay. Sean (laughs) Astin. Rudy, um, if you haven't seen it, m- n- at, you got to watch it during Christmas time. Okay. Okay. Christmas it, time, Rudy. Okay. Yeah. It is a holiday movie. Um, okay. Sean Astin, he plays football. Okay. Dude, you will cry so much. <laughs> okay. I don't, well, shoot. I can't have you spoil anything. Okay. You want to know anything about it? Like, mm. just a little bit. Why do you compare yourself to him? Give me that. Okay. He um, he has a lot of heart, but he's not good at all. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got you. Dude, but you're good at ping pong. I don't know why you're capping. You're good. Well, I mean, Rudy, he's good at, at what he does. <laughs> you're making it sound like he's not. <laughs> um... Man, but he he has a huge heart, and uh, he never gives up. Hell yeah, that's that's how you gotta be. 
Yeah, dude. Um, I so I I love watching Rudy, and like I forced my wife to watch it, and she definitely cried. I had already seen it like ten times. Oh my god! And then <laughs> <laughs> because it it's one of those that comes on around Christmas time, oh, around okay. football season, like every year on TV, and like when you're a kid, you're just like, hey, what's on today? And it, you know, so you so you just turn it you on. just saw it like seasonally, like every Christmas. Pretty much, yeah. Nice. Okay, okay. Did your wife like it? Yeah, yeah, she really liked it, dude. And uh, they um on the uh, the friendship onion. Oh yeah. Podcast. They talk about this movie a little bit because Sean Astin's in the latest episodes of oh, the Friendship Onion. So hell That's yes. Pretty interesting. He kind of like performs a little bit of his character. Oh, dude. Okay. Well, shout out. I'll have to watch the movie and then I'll listen to that episode. And it just, it makes me glad he's alive <laughs> and he's with us, you know, like, I just, I'm so thankful to have Sean Astin on earth. Dude, I feel the same way. I feel the same I way don't about know a lot of people as well. I don't know if you do, because you haven't seen Rudy. Wow. So I, I, <laughs> I'm just trolling I guess you. I can't appreciate him as much as you can, but I will, <laughs> but I will. Yeah, I'm I'm just playing, man. It's cool. It's cool. I know I recommend shit so much and um There's just I, a lot. I know There's it's lots overwhelming. To catch up on, you know? Yeah, it's super overwhelming, so I I never want you to feel like that. Dude, no, don't worry. Ooh, I have a recommendation for you. Um and anyone else. Uh have you ever heard of the Shield Hero? The Shield Hero, no. Okay, it's a show I've been getting into as of recently. Um, I had a friend recommend it to me. It's pretty freaking awesome. Um, and it's on Crunchyroll for free if you want to watch it. Whoa. So, shout out to all the weebs out there, including myself. Uh, I think it's pretty lit. So, uh, if you get some time and you want a show to watch, try that show yeah. because I think it's awesome. So, it's an anime? Yes. It's called The okay. Rising of the Shield Hero. Okay, dude, I love anime. I I think this is like, I haven't watched like a ton a ton, um, but this is one of my favorites so far. Okay, that's awesome. But we'll have to see if it's up your alley. I feel like it will be. Oh man, yeah, I'll I'll totally check it out because uh, uh, there's so much anime out there, and it's like, where do I begin? There's infinite, dude. It's like. And endlessly. If you thought there were a lot of movies, no. Anime has it topped by like a thousand times. Because they all have like hundreds of episodes. Yes, all of them. Literally. There's like few animes that have like less than 20. But even those ones are pretty good. Um, Have you ever seen Doro Hidoro on Netflix? No, I have not. That is a really good anime. Okay. I gotta make some notes then. Yeah, um... Oh, I, I probably don't watch a whole lot of anime, but I really liked that. Okay, I will check that one out as well. Ooh, I see it. Nice. Well, hell yeah. Um, I want to make sure that we plug your stuff. Where can people find you on the interwebs? Um, yeah, dude. Um, so you can find me on the Sneak Ritz podcast. Um, that's Sneak like s-n-e-a-k uh ritz it's all one word r-i-t-z uh sneak ritz podcast yeah How that's where that? you find me and what kind of what kind of content can uh can the people expect um yeah so we do like movie reviews video game reviews um we taste foods live let's go and <laughs> And we react to the sensation <laughs> and everything. Um, yeah, and so you get some, and, and we also talk about a lot about of our, our childhood and stuff. And uh, uh, we just put up a new episode yesterday, but it also has Shang Chi spoilers. So anybody who wants to check it out, um, be wary that there are Shang Chi spoilers in it. Um, like we just reviewed um i mean this is a surprise but uh oh. yeah we just reviewed this movie uh slipstream with mark hamill oh um, shit from, okay yeah it's from 1989 okay yeah 
So we kind of give you the rundown on everything with that. Um, but yeah, man, thanks for having me. Um, it's a huge honor to be here. Um, I'm a huge fan of yours. Dude, thank you. You're, you're too kind. Uh, make sure everyone go check out Joey. He's got a sick podcast going with, uh, with his wife. He might do some solo casts. That's rumors. All right. I'm not going to say where they're from, but there's rumors. Um, yeah. And yeah, dude, thanks for joining me. We have so many topics we didn't even get close to touching. So we'll have to bring you on again. Yeah, dude. Um, hopefully, maybe I'm thinking we can react to some of that uh, Mountain Dew mystery oh, flavor. Oh, heck yeah. We'll definitely so have a, a Mountain Dew taste test. And yeah, we'll I'll bring some to, to work. In, um, we'll throw in some more chip stuff because I feel like that's a, that's a hot topic these days. It's the best chips. Yeah. Maybe we'll cover the top Tio Dorito topic uh, next time. Yeah, dude. Um, thanks again for having me. I uh, hope you have a good day and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.